Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about the standard template library focusing in on the algorithm library. Now let's go ahead to CPP reference and I'll go ahead and show you what we're talking about today. So today, again, we'll be in the algorithms library. And we're going to continue our journey forward. So you can check out the previous videos if you want to see some specific implementations or future videos that are going to come here uh, for other types of algorithms. Now we're going to be focusing on non-modifying sequence operators today. So that is running a few different algorithms, again, that don't modify the actual container. So if we have a vector or a list, the contents remain the same. But today, specifically, we're going to be looking at some different comparison algorithms. Now, previously, we've looked at some things for search, things like find and so on. So again, check out the previous video, subscribe, etc., so you don't miss those. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of these different uh, operations for comparing containers. All right. Uh, and the first one that we're going to look at here is mismatch here. So let's go ahead and take a look at mismatch. I'll go ahead and bring it over to the side here. Actually, let's leave it uh, nice and large so you can see what's going on. And mismatch, what it does is basically returns us a pair. OK, so if I have two different containers, two vectors, for instance, and I'm looking at each individual element, it will return me the pair of mismatched characters. We'll do a little programming example here just so we understand it. But basically, we have one container here where we'll be uh, starting from, where we'll be ending from. And then our second container will have a starting position and we'll just keep iterating through and see if we have a mismatch. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look here at the complexity and the complexity here at most. So if we're looking at the size of the container, that's one way to read this. If I subtract the last element from the first, again, usually the last it could be the entire size. So this is sort of n elements. Um, basically, this is going to be a O of n uh, algorithm. Or rather, we should say O of n times potentially some multiplier of whatever the equality operator, which determines are we mismatched here, um, or times if we have some more complex predicate. Maybe there's some calculation that has to be taken. But in general, we can think of this as probably O of n times some maybe constant factor if we're just comparing integers. Uh, but maybe if we have a more expensive data structure, like a tree we have to traverse, this could be more expensive. So just keep that in mind. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example here uh, and play around with this. And uh, this is not required in... Uh, Actually, let's double check this. I don't believe this is C++20 here. Yeah, no, nope, we've had this for, for a while. Uh, I'm still going to be using C++20, although I kind of think of these algorithms as C++17 uh, and so on. Uh, so that's what we'll compile and run with. So anyways, let's give ourselves um, with mismatch here. I'll go ahead and leave the uh, signature up here so we can take a look here. Uh, two different uh, data structures. Let's give ourselves a vector uh, v and do something like one two three four and let's go ahead and give ourselves uh, another one here well, let's just go ahead and keep them the same for now and let's go ahead and see if this is a mismatch okay so let's do standard uh, miss uh, match and i'm going to be looking from v1 the beginning to the end and then we'll um oops that's the beginning of our first data structure be looking at to the end of our second one here. OK, so what does this return us if this is a match? Because this looks like it's going to be a match to me. It's running the equals equals operator uh, for that particular class. And this is just comparing these integer values here. Uh, let's go ahead and see if what it means if we have a mismatch here. Now, it should return a pair um, in the case that we do have some mismatch. Um, otherwise, let's see what it returns us. Uh, returns the first mis mismatching uh, pair here. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's go ahead and just scroll down here a little bit. Return value. OK, so we'll get a uh, pair uh, of iterators to the first two non-equal elements. It says if no mis mismatches are found when the comparison re reaches uh, last one. OK, that's our first uh, iterator. The pair holds last one and the corresponding iterator from the second range. OK, so the behavior is undefined if the second range is shorter than the first range. OK, so we probably have to do some sort of uh, potentially comparison check for this one uh, to make sure that our containers are the same size. Uh, and again, let's let's read the description here. So um, it's returning the first mismatching pair of elements from two ranges. So 
if we think about that, it sort of makes sense if I have a container that's four elements and a container that's five, there will eventually be a mismatch, okay? So that makes sense that we're gonna wanna do some sort of um, comparison uh, with the size of the containers here, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and read on. Uh, so, so that's where we get the sort of undefined behavior, right? If I'm comparing and sort of iterating to the end iterator, comparing it again, it just it, it's undefined behavior that that makes sense. Um, although we would probably like this to have uh, again a a size check on the container to see if it's even possible. Okay. Uh, otherwise, it says if no mismatches are found when the comparison reaches last one or last two, whichever happens first. Uh, the pair holds the end iterator and the corresponding iterator from the other range. Okay, so it looks like we're going to get two end iterators. So let's go ahead and just play around with this a little bit here. Um, so let's just go ahead and store our results here. And let's make this a little bit larger here. Uh, and first and foremost, let's make sure this compiles. We can run it. Um, and let's, let's do this with a third vector here, one that is going to mismatch. Um, and I'm going to play by the rules for now. Let's just go ahead and put five or again, something really obvious. That's not going to mismatch, uh, something like here. And let's compare V1 with, uh, oops. And it looks like there's a little bit of a typo here. We want to start from the, uh, beginning here. Okay. So let's go ahead to, uh, begin and let's take a look here. Okay. Get everything on one screen. Um, and let's just label this result one, result two. Okay, so I'll run this um, and no compilation errors. That's great. Um, and let, let's go ahead and print out result one uh, first. And again, this is a uh, pair that it's returning us. So do we need uh, first here? Let's see what the actual uh, type is without going to the documentation. Okay, so this is going to give us uh, some sort of error here. Uh, no named type, etc. Well, let's go ahead and see here from the example uh, what we are uh, retrieving here. Uh, from our mismatch, oh, they're, they're converting it uh, to a string, which is nice here. I'm seeing that we get a pair back. So, um, ah, they are doing a dot first on uh, this mismatch here. Uh, and they're converting it to a string so they can print it out nicely. Um, so that to me means what we're going to have to do is we just have to think about this a little bit here. Um, and let's actually bring up the air here. Let's try to bring this over here. Again, anytime we get this uh, jumbled mess here. Okay, so let's complain about the operator here. Um, I think our pair is fine. This was uh, compiling here, but let's think about this. Um, and let's see if we can get some hints from the documentation as well for what this pair is. Well, it's a pair of iterators. So I am returning uh, the first iterator and the second iterator here. Okay. In fact, uh, I'm going to want to solve this for both. Let's go ahead and uh, print those out here. Uh, first and second like this. Um, but again, if we're getting iterators here, uh, we're going to want to... Uh, well, this is just... Um, uh, a pair itself, so we're going to want to dereference this. Uh, okay, so we can actually get the values back here. Let's see what values we actually get back here. Uh, zero for each. Okay, that's interesting. Um, in this particular case here, um, because let's go ahead to our return value here. Let's see. So if no mismatches are found with the comparison reaches last, the pair holds last one and the corresponding iterator from the second range here, okay? Um, so basically what it looks like is, well, the end iterator for both of these is maybe just uh, zero here. <laughs> so, um, you know, we could um, basically just compare these if we wanna test for the equality here, okay? So let's just say if, um, Result one first is equivalent to result two uh, second. Then um, let's just print out uh, no mismatch found. Okay, so something like that uh, should do the trick here. And then we can go ahead and um, uh, just print this out here. Oops, let's see here. Result, uh, oops, result one second. There we are. All right. So no mismatch found. I mean, let, let's try our theory here. Let's go ahead and run this with like a five here. Uh, or we can, let's use our second uh, data set here. 
run the same example here. And let's go down here. Let's make sure that we're comparing with uh, vector three, which does have a uh, difference here. And let's update these to result two. And let's see if there's a mismatch. And what this uh, pair should return us here, result uh, two, is the values uh, four, because we're comparing from V1 here. So let's go ahead and see V1 begin to V1 and that looks good. And then V3 begin and then from V3. So we should see a four and a nine, 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 nine. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we have that here. Uh, and it looks like that's what we get. Brilliant. Um, so that's all there is to mismatch here. Now we can play around with this a little bit here. Let's go ahead and see, uh, you know, if I put it in the number 20, do we get 20 now? Uh, we should, right? Because it's the first uh, actual mismatch that we get. Okay. And again, because these are iterators here, um, if you wanted, if you get one mismatch and you want to find, you know, the other mismatches, you could, again, rerun this. Uh, you have your iterator at which that mismatch occurred, and then that's your new beginning, right? That position plus one to look at the next element. Okay. Um, now, again, as stated, what I probably want to do for this function here um, and let's actually wrap this into a little uh, example because we're going to do uh, some more stuff. Um, let's move this over here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, let's go down here a bit. Let's yank this and let's go ahead and put this in a uh, mismatch test here. And we'll just put it in a function like that. Now, again, the first thing that I probably want to do here with these containers is something like, um, and we can abstract this a little bit here. Let's practice some of our C++ here. So I have two vectors, V1, uh, vector uh, V2. We probably want to pass these in um, as const so that they're not being modified. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and move this uh, to the line so you can see here. Um, and, you know, assuming this is some very large, um, vector here, then we want to pass it by reference so we, that we don't make a copy. Okay, so good things to do there. And I'm just going to refactor this code a little bit just so we can see everything uh, on the screen. Nice and easy here. There we go. Um, and that's looking much better here. Okay, so let's go ahead and with our refactored mismatch test, let's try this out here. Uh, mismatch test. B1, B2. Okay. Run it. No mismatch found. Let's give ourselves back V3. And I don't know, increment this to some value like uh, 17. Rerun it here with V3. And this is looking much better here. Okay. And now we can also catch our uh, case here if we have some undefined uh, behavior. Uh, you know, if we wanted, we could assert this, um, to make sure this is true. I'm just going to do a runtime check here. If V1 dot size is not equal to, uh, V2 dot size, uh, then we're just going to return from this function. Okay. Uh, and let's go ahead and try that out to make sure that we catch it, um, and run it. And, uh, this is doing... Uh, its job, it's not running this first test. It's running the second one because the sizes uh, here do uh, match here. Um, but uh, that's the idea here. Okay, so uh, we need the sizes to match. Okay, so again, this is how you can use um, an example of the standard algorithms as building blocks to, you know, build up some safer code. But again, we're not writing the for loop and checking each element and making mistakes there, right? It's very clear what this is doing. I'm just looking from the beginning to the end um, and then comparing it to every other element here to see where there's a mismatch, okay? And then I get the iterators if I want to actually look at those values, which I have printed off here, okay? So that's going to be a mismatch here. So let's go ahead and get everything on the uh, screen for us. And then I think we are actually good to go at this point here. I think I'm going to actually, since this video is getting a little bit long and then I'll get into, um, I'll break out the other algorithms into some smaller videos, but you know, really what I want to capture here is this nice idea that, well, again, we have this nice built in algorithm. Uh, we've abstracted a little bit. Some of the things that maybe we don't like with undefined behavior and just kind of looking through the, uh, docs here, right? We can build up, uh, from these building blocks, our own functions. Okay. Uh, so that's the idea. That's one of the takeaways from today's lesson that, uh, I think is, is nice just playing around with this stuff.
Uh, and we also have to understand, you know, a little bit about the complexity of mismatch. Um, you know, in the general case, it's going to be linear, but again, it just depends on how uh, much time those comparisons take. Okay, so that's another thing that we want to recap. All right, so with that said, I'll add this video to uh, courses.mshot.io, uh, free playlist if you want to sign up there and track your progress because we're going to have a bunch of these algorithms. Uh, and I hope otherwise this was a useful video for you to see this um, other algorithm that exists. Again, we're going to be going through a whole bunch of them, so uh, hopefully you're enjoying these. Feel free to leave any uh, comments below if you have any. And then otherwise, thank you for your time and attention, folks.